Hey, what's happening, everyone? It is I, the man, the myth, the mustache, Tim here, and I'm a little bit under the weather, but that's not gonna stop me from bringing you some great videos. So please sit back and relax while I tell you about what if Deku got a magic quirk, part three. Once again, sit back and relax because you are in for a treat. The next day of UA classes was noticeably tame compared to what happened yesterday. Midoriya felt at ease, not immediately being thrown into an extremely tense situation from the start of the day, while he also held on to an eagerness of what was to come. Today was the day Class 1A would have their first day of hero training, and the Emerald Eyed Magician had barely forced himself asleep between the drive to study his schoolbook more meticulously and ponder the exercises of the class. It felt like an eternity before the class finally rolled around, all the 1A students sitting together in an empty classroom, chatting amongst each other as they attempted to guess who would be teaching their class. Their guesses were cut short as a familiar booing voice announced their presence to the class. I am here! The door was flung open to reveal All Might, dressed in a yellow pinstripe suit. All of the students were instantly silenced by the awe they felt at having the number one pro hero in all of Japan teaching them. The luminary was quick to begin exciting the class with a speech before revealing a compartment in the wall that contained several numbered suitcases. The cases were revealed to be costumes that were designed specifically to the plans the students had submitted. Needless to say, the class was quick to surge forward and grab their new costumes and move to change into them. Midoriya moved to the training grounds All Might had told Class 1A to meet at blinking as he realized that it was a cityscape extremely similar to the one the entrance exams had taken place in. Midoriya walked over to Bakugo, glancing at his new costume, taking particular interest in the gauntlets he was wearing. Jeez, you look like even more of a nerd than you normally do. Bakugo laughed as he looked at his childhood friend. The magician glanced down at his own costume, a special-made fireproof messenger bag already at his side holding his spellbook inside. He wore an emerald green armored jumpsuit with black stripes, made in a way to resemble the rune circles in his own spellbook and a matching color domino mask already on his face. Don't listen to him. I think your costume's really cool. Uaraka moved over to the two. The design really reflects how cool your quirk is. Oh, thanks. Midoriya smiled at the shorter girl, rubbing the back of his head as Bakugo rolled his eyes. The eyes of the trio darted over to All Might as he called for the class to gather around for him to explain the exercise. Today, we'll be performing a partner battle between heroes and villains, roles which you young trainees will be filling. The faux villains will be guarding a bomb in which the heroes must try and disarm. If the heroes can successfully disarm the bomb, then the heroes lose. If the heroes are incapacitated completely or out of time, the villains will win. Now then... He pulled out a small box from behind his back. You will be drawing lots in order to be paired off. All right, sir. Ida's hand shot up into the air. Wouldn't we make more efficient teams if we chose our partner rather than leave it up to chance? I think All Might is doing this to get us ready for the real hero world, right? Midoriya looked between the pro and his fellow classmate. When an emergency or villain attack occurs, you don't really get to pick and choose who you'll end up working with, right? Ah, of course. The stiff boy turned to his teacher and bowed deeply. I apologize for questioning your methods of teaching. And if me and Abracadabra were working together, we'd crush the rest of you. Hey, that's a little arrogant of you to say, don't you think? A pink-skinned girl stepped over, narrowing her eyes at the blonde. Just as the explosively tempered teen was about to respond, Midoriya stepped in for some early damage prevention. What Kachan means is... We've been friends for years. He subtly crushed Bakugo's toes underneath his heel as the blonde attempted to speak, muttering curses instead. We've had many more times working as a team with our quirks and can work far better together than some of you might be able to. The girl paused for a moment before shrugging and accepting the answer. Midoriya finally removed his heel from Bakugo's shoe, the crimson-eyed adolescent promising pain if they ended up battling against each other. Their instructor finally regained their attention as everyone began to draw their lots. Midoriya ended up being teamed up with Toru Hagakure, a girl whose quirk allowed her to be entirely invisible. Wait, you're telling me that all they gave you was a pair of gloves? 
That's completely unfair. Isn't there some sort of special fabric that could have used to turn invisible with you? Emerald's eyes were full of concern for his classmate. I would feel extremely exposed if I were in the same situation. I guess it's all they can do. After all, I don't think it's often people with quirks like mine manage to get into the UA Hero course. Just as the Juniper Hair team was about to scoff at that excuse, All Might finally, with a small amount of difficulty, paired up all the teams against each other. The first teams will be fighting against each other are... Team A as the heroes against Team C as the villains. Midori and Hagakure step forward as Team A against the pink-skinned girl from earlier, Mina Ashido and Momo Yayorozu, who the freckled magician noticed also had a rather exposing costume. Midoriya brought Hagakure close to plan while their two adversaries were allowed to make their way up to where the bomb was held. Upon All Might's call to start, the two crept quietly into the building, being wary of their surroundings. Hagakure kept her gloves on so that they didn't collide when they quietly made their way up the stairs. The duo were becoming increasingly suspicious as they passed floor after floor without incident, until Midoriya's ankle was suddenly yanked from the ground and he found himself bound in capture tape. Hagakore threw off her gloves and got ready for a fight while Midoriya broke free of his bonds with a spell. Both stood in fighting stances, waiting for several minutes for someone to pop out, only to realize it was only a trap. Yayorozu must have these floors filled with traps in order to slow down our progress. We're gonna have to be careful. The magician handed his partner her gloves as they slowly moved forward. It's likely they're going to try and run down our time limit so that they can keep direct fighting between us at a safe minimum. We're in for a tough time. The two began ascending the floors again, being trapped several times more despite their extreme caution. The ruined state of the building left many places for tripwires and snares to be placed while remaining entirely out of sight. They had wasted a lot of their time before they had arrived at the last flight of stairs, finding it covered in an odd slime, likely Mina's acid, if Midoriya recalled her court correctly. He placed a hand firmly on the step and nearly lost traction immediately. The specific viscosity and pH of the acid made the steps a near frictionless surface, meaning they would almost never make it up the stairs, while walking at least. Erratico! Midoriya whispered the word, creating a small platform for him and Hagakure to stand on before concentrating on lifting them off the floor and over the stairs. They landed quietly on the next floor. Hagakure removed her gloves to begin moving stealthily towards the bomb. There! Mina! Yayorozu yelled out. On it! As soon as Hagakure began to step forward, a giant globule of highly viscous acid flew from the origin of the sound pinning the invisible girl to the wall. Midoriya's eyes widened as he peeked from behind the corner, realizing that Yayorozu had managed to create thermogoggles, nullifying Hagakure's stealth. He cursed in his head as Ashido teasingly dared him to come out and fight. Another peek saw that the two had been busy covering the entirety of the floor between them in more of the slip-and-slide slime from earlier. He mouthed for Hagakure to keep watch, in case they did decide to come after him as he pulled out his spellbook and began scouring for a spell to use, a familiar one coming up quickly. Silicus Miles Sasatachio! The stone monsters he had created in the UA entrance exams made a bold return as they sprang up from the ground, disrupting the floor and leaving spots that weren't covered in a liquid more slippery than ice. The golems proved to be not much more useful for anything other than that, and distracting the faux villains while he freed his own teammate. They picked up no traction, and while they could tear themselves free of any immediate sticky attacks from Mina, they couldn't reach them. The floor was eventually so full of the more viscous acid that the golems were finally stuck to the floor. However, Midori immediately saw that their adversaries had made a fatal error when trapping his golems. He whispered quietly to his teammate before aiming a hand at Yaoyorozu. Contigo. A small square shot from his glowing palm and struck the goggles Yayorozu had been holding and encased them in a box. He threw his arm out and the box followed the movement before disappearing, throwing the thermal reading gear against the wall and shattering it. No, we won't be able to see Hagakure now. No worries, they can't get past my acid. 
Somnus. Mina suddenly collapsed while a strong case of drowsiness overcame Yayurozu. She managed to slap herself awake, looking over to see Midoriya holding his spellbook. Thinking quickly, the raven-haired girl made a slingshot and launched a small piece of debris right at Midoriya, making him cry out as it hit his arm with serious force. He was forced to make a shield to protect himself from the hail of projectiles. She continued to pelt him as she looked for any signs of his teammate, eyes falling over the golems, the golems with dusty footprints on them. But that means that... I did it! I touched the bomb! An invisible hand waved a piece of debris right next to the bomb as All Might called the round in favor of the heroes. Yayorozu slumped forward in defeat as she shook Mina awake. Eventually, all four students made their way down, instantly being praised by some of their classmates. They had been watching and were amazed at how amazing they were, how both teams did. Momo tried to downplay her actions, but Mina refused, backing up the students as they complimented the brilliant girl on her plan, bringing a bright grin to her face. Does anyone have an opinion here on who was the most viable asset during this exercise? <laughs> it's obviously the damn nerd. Would you care to explain, young Bakugo? After all, each one of the participants showed great skill, but the nerd overcame and used their skills. Without his help, Invisigirl over there would have been stuck in slime. All Might accepted the answer as he called forth the remaining teams to fight. Midoriya felt disappointed, but not surprised at how quickly Kachan and Jiro took out Mineta and Ojiro. The diminutive student already didn't bring much to the table, and with Jiro's quirk allowing her to hear through walls, it was like a game of battleship with a clear barrier. Todoroki's own match turned out to be another clean sweep, as the heterochromatic teen encased an entire building in ice, immediately trapping the faux villains while he calmly walked and touched the bomb. At last, their day was over, and they were all able to go home, Midoriya waving goodbye to the friends he had made in his class before falling in step with Bakugo. The two arrived at the Midoriya residence, the door opening to the delicious smell of Inko cooking. Damn, Auntie, that smells great. Ah, Kotsky, it's lovely to see you. She set a plate of steaming food on the table. Would you like some? I still have some of that hot sauce you like. Move the hell over, nerd, and make room for me. The old hag can wait. Inko laughed as the two pushed each other as they headed for the table, smiling fondly. Elsewhere, a threat loomed as a head of scraggly blue hair was hunched over a glass of alcohol in a dimly lit bar. A picture of All Might was pinned in place by a knife right over his heart. I'll be coming soon, All Might. Crazy red eyes looked up at the photo. I'll make sure to get rid of you soon, just as Sensei wants. And that's our video, so thank you all for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed it. Before I go, there's a little bit of housekeeping I want to go over. First, We the Celestials has many other incredible content and channels for your entertainment and viewing pleasures. All the information you'll need is right below in the description, so please feel free to check out all the other incredible content our team creates. Second, on behalf of We the Celestials, I want to thank everyone involved in their production of today's awesome content. Their details are also in the description. That's it for today's video, so thank you all for watching and have an amazing day. And as always, be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and stay awesome. This has been Tim. Mustache out.